let the picking begin. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein and I'm here to herald the coming of the Sopla strawberry season. I've got a trio of recipes from a main course to the pinnacle of desserts all starring the wonderful Sopla strawberry here on Sopla Taste. Taste Buds. I'm Michelle Bernstein coming to you from the Goya Kitchen at Junior Achievement of South Florida in beautiful Coconut Creek and welcome to SoFlo Taste. Living in SoFlo means so much to us when it comes to seasonal fruits and veggies and we're coming up to the peak time for the fabulous little sweet red fruit, the strawberry. So today I thought it would be fun and timely to give you some of my favorite recipes for strawberries. So let's get cooking. This one, you'll probably never guess, um, I'm combining oysters and strawberries. Sound weird? I don't think so. What we're gonna do is make a mignonette. A mignonette sounds kind of like a vinaigrette, but there's no oil in it. So it's a very traditional sauce that you use for dipping oysters. Here I brought some oysters from my good old friends at Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. These are called Virginia Oysters East Coast. East Coast oyster is always a lot more briny, than the West Coast oyster that has that kind of melony, cucumbery finish to it. Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market wants me to let you know that you need to put your Valentine's Day in your calendar, get the items for you for your Valentine's Day meal. They've got steaks and stone crabs, everything that's so good and delicious. They are located at 4191 North State Road 7 in Hollywood. Call them at 954-983-68. 31. Tell them Michelle sent you. Go and get some beautiful foods to celebrate each other. All right, so that's about all that's going to fit on my plate. What I wanted to show you though, I don't know if you saw what was on my plate before I put my oysters down. Sorry about that. I've got some rock salt with a little bit of pink peppercorns just to sit the oysters on. Now if you'd rather go with crushed ice, you can do that too, but these are really, really cold. So let's jump into this recipe real quickly. Mignonette, the first important ingredient is black peppercorn and a nice amount of it. To properly toast black peppercorns, so this is a dry pan, never put any oil, never put any liquid in it. You basically want to toast it in the hot pan until it becomes fragrant which this is, I can tell because I'm <coughs> coughing a little bit. So that's when I know we're done. I'm gonna go ahead and put that into a mortar with pestle and crush it a little bit. I'm gonna toast delicately some pink peppercorns and these are really fruity and I thought these would be kind of fun in this recipe as well. So let's go ahead and crush the black ones. Now a mignonette always has crushed black peppercorns, never ground black pepper. And you see how easily that crushed? It's really hard to get a perfect crush unless you're using a mortar pestle. Maybe the back of a saute pan might work, but that's about it. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. The pink don't crush as much. They're usually pretty whole. But let's see if I can get them a little bit crushed. Yeah, they do. Okay, there we go. So let's go ahead and put these into the bowl as well. And that already smells so good and so inviting. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is cut some shallot, really nice and small. So this is half a shallot. I basically layer it up and then slice it into little strips and then cut it into little diced pieces. Let me keep cutting some more. So the beauty of a mignonette is that you are allowing your palate to really enjoy the saltiness of an oyster without clouding it with too much flavor. We're gonna add an acid to it for balance, but also to bring out the flavor of the oyster even more. And in this case, I'm adding a little something fun because we are adding the strawberries to it. So I think that's enough shallot. So let's go ahead and add that to our bowl. Now you want this to be as salty as an oyster is. So add a nice amount of salt in there. Then finally, we're gonna add our strawberries. So these are local strawberries. These are from down south in Homestead. If you're gonna use a knife to stem them, just go as close as you can to the top of the strawberry. You don't wanna lose any strawberry. And they're just so delicious. So I think about six of them might do us. 
and we're going to cut these really nice and small, just like the shallot. So let's go ahead and slice them first. Now you could do the same thing with green strawberries, or you can pickle them, which is really delicious as well. So I'm going to cut these in a second, but let's go ahead and add all the liquids to this first. So I brought a really good French style of um, red wine vinegar. I'll add a little bit of that. And if you don't want to use Prosecco or champagne in this, you can use a little bit of water to balance it out, but you need something to balance out the acid. So water will do just fine, and we do a lot of that in regular mignonettes. But here, because we're celebrating the strawberry, I figured why not add a little bit of bubbly. So let's go ahead and put our bubbles in. And then I'll just chop up the strawberries, nice and small. Now, if oysters are not your thing, you can always make this sauce to go on a shrimp cocktail, would be absolutely delicious, as well as um, some fresh crab can be dipped into this too. A mignonette can be rather versatile. But I just love that you have the sweetness of this strawberry to balance out the sauce. So let's go ahead and put it all in there. Go ahead and mix it around a little bit. And let's serve it right in the middle. So pretty, so bright, so lovely. While you guys take a break, I'm gonna go ahead and take a bite of this. Look how gorgeous this is. Oh, yum! More of my favorite recipes for the strawberry after the break. Come right back. Come back to SoFlo Taste from the Goya Kitchen at Junior Achievement of South Florida. It's my pleasure to announce the winner of Goya's Seasonings Greetings $500 gift card giveaway. It's Christopher James of Kendall. Congratulations, Christopher, and thanks for watching SoFlo Shows. Enjoy that $500 because if it's Goya, it has to be good. Back to SoFlo Taste, brought to you by the Strawberry. I'm here at Junior Achievement of South Florida in Coconut Creek, a place committed to hands-on learning for your kids. And Junior Achievement of South Florida wants you to save the date, January 27th, just two weeks away. That's the date of their fabulous event, Uncorked, a night of food, drink, and fun. For ticket sponsorship opportunities and more information, visit jasouthflorida.org slash jaworlduncorked or call 954-979-7120. Now back to the berries. All right, y'all. We are going to make pork chops with a balsamic roast strawberry and a fennel strawberry salad. Sound a little chefy? I know, but I can't help it. I am one. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat up a cast iron skillet. I've got my oven hot and ready. And we are going to just give a little flavor to the pork chop, but not too much because we don't want to take away from the strawberry. So I'm just going to do a nice salt and pepper. I have a little bit of ground fennel here, mainly because I'm using a fennel, shaved fennel salad, and I love it. This is Coleman's mustard. I love the idea of putting a little bit of dried mustard on this as well. Let's go ahead and get both sides. Of course, these beautiful pork chops come from Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. They are gorgeous. They're bone in, they're fat, they're delicious. Make sure you go visit Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market located at 4191 State Road 7 over in Hollywood. Go see the guys, DelawareChicken.com. Make sure you tell them Michelle sent you. Get these pork chops or anything else. Stone crabs are crazy good. Everything is delicious. Just ask for help. They will easily guide you through the store. All right, so well seasoned with a little bit of everything. Let's go ahead and put both oil and butter into the pan. If you don't have a cast iron pan, that's fine. Just make sure you use a pan that can transfer into a nice hot oven without any problems. 
Now, I don't go for the craziest, hottest sear on my pork chops. I happen to like a more delicate sear. I think it keeps them a little juicier, but that's a personal preference. Okay, once they just start searing, go ahead and add maybe a tablespoon of butter should do, and let's let those go. Let's jump over to the strawberries. I'm going to go ahead and roast the strawberries at the same time as the pork chop. I've got these shallots here. I'm going to go ahead and cut the shallots in quarters and throw them into, the pan is not on, and I'm not gonna turn it on. We're just gonna go straight in the oven when we go with the pork chops into the oven. Because these are local and they're a little bit small, I've decided not to cut them down. So I'm just gonna add the amount of strawberries that I think is proficient for the pork chop. Okay, let's do that. So I'm gonna add a little bit of brown sugar into this, a light brown sugar, to make this more of a glaze once it's heated. Some balsamic, don't use your crazy fancy balsamic on this. It, it would be a shame and if you get any type of an aged or reduced balsamic, it's gonna burn and it's not gonna be juicy enough. So I'm just adding good balsamic, but nothing too crazy good. This would definitely go well with a good amount of black pepper. I don't know if any of you have ever tried strawberries, basil and pepper and balsamic with a little bit of sugar on vanilla ice cream, but if you haven't, you have to try it. Incredible. The black pepper makes everything just come out. I'm gonna add a sprig of rosemary in here, nizzle it in there. Let's do one big sprig of thyme in there as well. And then I'm gonna finish it later with a little bit of butter and I'm gonna just put a little bit of lemon zest in there as well. Okay, let's flip over our pork chop. So as you can see, it's got a beautiful caramelization but I didn't go crazy, crazy heavy with it. So we're gonna go straight in the oven with both of these pans and not at the same time because they're too heavy. All right, let's get the fennel and strawberry salad ready for when the pork comes out of the oven. If you've never met a fennel bulb, I've already cleaned it, but this is what a fennel bulb looks like. I use it a lot on the show, probably because I think it is my absolute favorite vegetable on the face of the earth. At first, when my mother used to make salads with this, when I was a kid, I thought it was absolutely disgusting. I don't like black licorice, in fact, I hate it. And she used to cut it really thick, but back then, there were no mandolins. There were no ways of cutting things paper thin as there are today, at least not as easy as they are today. So once I tasted that she made later on a shaved fennel salad with a lot of lemon and oil, I realized that the fennel turned into something totally different. It became delicately anise flavored, so delicate that whole black licorice idea went out the window, which I still, by the way, today hate black licorice. I wish I liked it, but I just don't. So you take the fennel, you're just gonna shave this into a bowl. We're gonna take some more strawberries, Let's take some more from here. And I don't wanna cut them too fine because I don't wanna lose them. So I'm gonna keep on cutting the strawberries. I'm gonna make a beautiful salad, just a little bit of fresh squeezed lemon, dill, olive oil, and salt. And when we come back, we'll bring it all together. And when you come back, remember, all of these recipes, including the strawberry recipes, are available on the SoFlow Shows webpage. Just scan this quick response code for a quick trip to the SoFlow Shows page. Come right back, because I got more. After the food, it's SoFlow Home Project, next on Local 10. We'll see what's cooking on SoFlow Taste right after this. Welcome back to Soflo Taste at the Goya Kitchen at Junior Achievement of South Florida. We have strawberries roasting, pork in the oven. Let's see how it all turned out. I can tell you it smells delicious. Our strawberries have roasted and I can smell that they started leaking their juices into the salt. I'm gonna turn this pan on to finish our strawberry sauce with two tablespoons of butter and a little bit of salt. The pork chop is definitely ready. 
You know what we're gonna do? I hate to get rid of all these delicious juices from the pan, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and pour a little bit of this into the strawberry sauce. There we go. Don't forget, we have rosemary and thyme that we need to take out, that we left whole, remember? So get that out of there. The shallots are beautifully soft. I'm just gonna swirl in the butter. Our uh, shaved fennel salad is ready. Let's go ahead and start pouring the roast strawberries and balsamic and shallots all over the pork. Tell me that doesn't look delicious. And then let's finish it with the fresh strawberries and fennel salad. So yummy. Wow. Now that is a meal. Get a load of that one. Delish. All right, I think we should finally jump into desserts. I mean, this is a strawberry show after all, right? I'm making the most perfect strawberry shortcake. So I decided to give you the best strawberry shortcake I could make and find. I really wanted to make a perfect sponge. So I tried a few recipes and I found one on the New York Times. What I really wanted to show you was how to get the most out of your strawberry. So we're gonna start out with sliced strawberries. So these are some sliced strawberries. So you could do one of two things. You can remove the stem with your fingers, just like so. But my favorite is to take a knife because you see this little part right here that comes so close to the edge. Take the heel of your knife to just release that. And then all you have to do is just slice a quarter of an inch thick. And you have these beautiful slices for your cake. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna macerate these strawberries so that we have a sauce to glaze on our sponge. So take some sugar, take either a lime or a lemon. I kind of chose limes today because here in South Florida we use so much lime and I'm gonna use a little bit of the zest as well as juice. And if you allow this to just sit and macerate for as long as you can, and I'm talking minutes, I'm not talking hours, you will release the best juices from your strawberry into this sugar, and then we will have a beautiful pink, delicious syrup to glaze on our cake. Okay, while that macerates, let's go ahead and make my favorite cream for this cake. So here we have a bowl of whipping cream. This is some creme fraiche, and if you don't find creme fraiche, you can use sour cream in this recipe. So all you need is a hand mixer, or a stand mixer, it's up to you. I don't like adding the sugar or the sour cream in yet. I like to wait. Now that things have gotten a little frothy, I'm gonna go ahead and add the vanilla paste, or you can add some extract here now, as well as some powdered sugar. And I don't go crazy with the powdered sugar because you know, you've got the sugar macerating in the strawberry. You also have the cake made with sugar. So I don't like this to be too sweet. Okay, you see how we are so close to being whipped cream? Now I'm gonna add some creme fraiche to this. And what this does is just gives it a bit of a more luxurious texture, but most importantly, it gives a little bit of the sour taste of the creme fraiche to balance out with the sweetness of the whipped cream. So now you see it, we've got whipped cream. So now, as you see, we have beautiful strawberry syrup on the bottom of our bowl. Let's go ahead and start to layer. So for the first layer of the cake, I cut the cake in half already. Let's go ahead and pour some of the juice from the strawberry down onto the cake and then add our delicious whipped cream layer. You don't wanna to go too crazy, don't add too, too much. You want it to be nice and even. Beautiful. Let's add the strawberries. All right, everyone. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this up with as many berries as I can. Then we're just gonna top it with another layer and repeat. So come right back. So 
SoFlo Taste will return right after this. Welcome back to my strawberry show. Take a look at how beautiful my shortcake came out. I think it's pretty gorgeous. You can always add another layer, but I don't think you need it. Well, thank you so much for coming along on my strawberry tour today. Be sure to try my recipes now that SoFlo strawberry season is here. And here's a tip. They are even better if you pick them yourself. Next week, it's a super show. It's soup season, even here in SoFlo. So join me for a trio of steaming bowls of delicious. So the soup's on, on the next SoFlo Taste. Hi Michelle, good morning. So today we are creating some elbow room by taking things outside. Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, we'll be sharing expert advice on how to create fun and fabulous outdoor spaces. So Taste Buds, thanks for spending another morning with me. I love sharing my strawberry recipes with you. I'll see you here next time. Goodbye and good taste. It's very, very good.